So it's been a month since I bought the brand new MacBook Pro M1 Pro, and I've used it everywhere. In this studio, in remote studios, on the train, in hotel rooms, I've used it just about everywhere. And I've also been carrying around my old MacBook Pro just in case something didn't work on the new one, just in case I hadn't installed a plugin or there was some issue and I couldn't get my work done. But honestly, I really didn't need to because the new one has been amazing. It's been so good. It hasn't missed a beat. I haven't had any issues with it whatsoever. I've been able to do all my work with it. And yeah, no problems whatsoever. Now I did a previous video on me going through installing all my new stuff and testing it all out. And I got a whole load of questions in that video on various different things to do with the new MacBook Pro. So I thought in this video, I'd answer some of those questions. So the first one is, does everything work on it? Well, in that previous video, I went through and I installed all the plugins that I usually use. And apart from RC20, everything worked just fine. And I even solved RC20 a few days after that video. I installed a new update. I didn't realize there was another update or maybe they just released one in between me putting live the video. But I installed that new update and RC20 was great. So yeah, every single plugin I've tried to install, even the new ones that I've been testing out, have been, all been brilliant. The only thing I've had to do is I've had to upgrade some of my Waves plugins. They were old versions and they weren't working so great. So I had to upgrade to some of the latest versions. It was one of those things, you know, it, it gave me a good opportunity to kind of figure out which plugins I actually really used in the Waves range. And I just upgraded those. So I didn't upgrade every single one of them. So yeah, for the most part, every single thing has worked just fine on it. I haven't had a single occasion where I've had to go back to my old Mac to actually do something. Everything has just worked straight away. I couldn't really believe this, but one of the biggest questions underneath the video were the fan noise, which is a really strange thing to me. I don't really notice the fan noise on my old MacBook because it's underneath my desk, my studio desk. So I don't actually notice the fans kicking in, but I, I don't think in the whole month of using the new MacBook Pro M1 Pro, I've ever heard the fans kick up. Honestly, they have not kicked in at all. And that's been during everything that I've been doing on it. Even in tense sessions in the studio with so many different tracks in my full projects. Again, no fans come on there at all. Even video editing where I've been, you know, editing these videos for the channel. I haven't noticed the fans kick in whatsoever. Even when rendering out 4K videos, again, totally silent. So I'm not actually quite sure what I need to do to make those fans do anything. So. If you do have the MacBook Pro and you've managed to make the fans work, then I don't know what you're doing on it because honestly, it just seems to take everything you throw at it just easily. Now, another question that came up in the comments was the RAM options, whether to go for the 16 gigabyte or the 32 gigabyte option. And I went for the 16 gigabyte and that's purely based on previous experience and what I've got in my previous MacBooks. Because when I bought the new MacBook, there weren't really any bench tests as such and the reviews weren't as in depth to actually know which option to really go for. I didn't know myself. So I went on previous experience and I went for the 16 gigabytes. Now I don't tend to use those big kind of sample based instruments so much. So I don't really notice that within my RAM. Generally, when I had problems in the past, it was down to CPU uh, peaking or hard drive just being too slow. So I would freeze instruments tracks and I would load samples into RAM and that will kind of fix most of my issues. So. RAM was never really an issue for me. And I have to say on the new MacBook, it's it's been brilliant. I haven't had a single issue. I haven't had to freeze anything. I haven't had to load anything into RAM. It's just worked perfectly fine. I think that's mainly down to the speed of the hard drive. There's something in the new architecture that communicates between the CPU and the hard drive and maybe how it uses VRAM on the new hard drives, but it just works so smoothly, so quickly that I haven't noticed any issue at all with going with the 16 gigabytes worth of RAM. There's also a whole load of other great bench test kind of videos that are out recently. And I've, and I've actually watched a few of them saying that it doesn't matter so much between the 16 gigabyte and the 32. Maybe it is just certain cases where you do really, really need the RAM. But for most cases, it doesn't seem to be an issue as much. Now the next subject got a whole load of comments under my previous video and it's all to do with buffer size and I have to hold my hands up here, I got it wrong. I didn't even look at the buffer size when I was comparing my old Mac and my new Mac. My old Mac, my 2015 MacBook Pro was running 1024 samples buffer size. Now that's quite high but 
generally that's because anything lower than that when I got to the end of a project will cause me no end of glitches. It's an old MacBook plugged into an old audio interface so I wouldn't expect anything less and it's just something I've lived with. Now with the new MacBook Pro I've got it set to 256 samples which I think is the default for Ableton. According to the dialog box it's given me 14 milliseconds worth of latency which to me feels so much quicker and actually it's totally livable i absolutely love it at that speed now i can get it down to 128 milliseconds i i noticed the odd glitch here and there but not hardly at all which is lightning fast fast for me anything lower than 128 and i notice a whole load of glitches which actually i'm going to put down to my old interface it's the rme 400 which is i think about a decade old by now so that's a really old interface and i'm sure with the dongles and the firewire and everything else like that it's probably slowing it down no end so yeah 128 works quite nicely but for me i'm settling with 256 because it works just great there are also a few questions about Rosetta versus native M1. Now, Rosetta is a way for the new M1 Max to run old apps and plugins and things like that. And Apple have done such a great job with Rosetta that I don't think I've even noticed whether any of my apps or plugins are native M1 or not because they're running so good as it is. I'm running the current stable version of Ableton 11 and it works just fine. As goes for most of my plugins, I haven't even thought about whether it's an M1 version or uh, a non-M1 version, uh, one that I'm running through Rosetta because both of them just seem to work fine as it is. I've had a few issues with a few plugin manufacturers that have updated their plugins recently and they haven't quite worked right and they've put more updates out so they have crashed occasionally but that's generally because they're just trying to figure this stuff out but for the general part the older ones the older kind of plugins that haven't been m1 optimized yet have been working just fine and very very quick i haven't noticed any issue with them whatsoever there are also a few comments about the Ableton beta as well, and I agree with most of them. I've tested it out a little bit, and it just seems really buggy. For me, it's just not usable at the moment. And this is my main work machine. I do all of my engineering, all of my tracks on it. I want something that's stable. So I'm using the current version of Ableton 11, which works brilliantly at the moment. I'm not even too worried about having an M1 optimized one. That's gonna be great when it finally comes out and it's non-buggy and it works great, but for now, the stable version works just great. So after a month of using this new MacBook Pro, I absolutely love it. It has been brilliant for me. It hasn't missed a beat. Everything that I've got works on it just fine. Even though I was carrying around my old MacBook Pro just in case, I really didn't need to because everything just worked perfectly fine on this new one. I think I've chosen the right model as well. I really kind of wondered about the 16 gigabyte versus 32 gigabyte RAM upgrade. I even kind of questioned them in the shop and they said, you can bring it back within 14 days. You know, if, if you find that the RAM's not enough for you, you can get the 32 gigabyte version instead. And honestly, I never needed to. I've thrown everything at it and it's worked just fine. I actually really like the fact that I did the hard drive upgrade as well. I got the one terabyte version and that just means I've got even more space to kind of play with. And from what I can kind of see from this, the VRAM, the way that the kind of the MacBook uses the hard drive as virtual RAM works so well because that hard drive is rocket quick. So yeah, I think it's it's all working great for me. The, even the things that I thought would be annoying, for example, the dongles aren't too annoying. I'm having to carry these ones around quite often. So this is just a USB-C to USB-A adapter, just in case I wanna plug in a hard drive or a USB stick, which let's face it, if you're out on the road, you probably will do at some point. So yeah, that's the only thing that I can find that's annoying me, but even that doesn't annoy me too much. This machine is an absolute beast and it's it's taking everything that I'm throwing at it. As to whether it's the right upgrade for you, only re really you can answer that question. I use certain plugins, I don't use others, and it depends on you know how you use your machine as to what kind of upgrade you need to do, what options you need to pick, whether you wanna go for the M1 Max, which felt way too much for me, it felt like overkill, whether you need to upgrade to 32 gigabytes worth of RAM, it might be good for you if, if you're using those big sample library instruments. But for me, I think I picked the right option. That M1 Pro is amazing and it just works so well for me. Right, 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 right now. I'm gonna bring it back.